Digital multiple exposures can be a fun and satisfying way for us to explore different aspects of the same subject's personality. They can also help us form deeper themes and ideas of personal connection. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to set up for a multiple exposure capture, as well as showing you some post-production editing in Photoshop using layer masks. My name's Professor Patel, and welcome to the Photography Parlor. So here's the finished image. Three Professor Patels for the price of one. Excellent. In terms of tools that you'll need, ideally you'd use a DSLR or similar camera, a tripod and a light source. I use my big Octobox and a speed light. If you haven't got those tools available at home, don't worry about it. You can create just a stunning image using a mobile phone, a stack of books or similar to replace the tripod and natural daylight. Once you've set up the lighting and the composition of the image, all you've got to do is take a shot, move the subject, take a shot, move the subject, and repeat as many times as your heart desires. Because I was the subject of my own image, I used the self-timer. Okay, so let's move over to Photoshop. So essentially, our aim here is to create a nice stack of layers in our layer palette using the other images that we want to bring onto our base image, let's call it for argument's sake. The base image is referring to the photograph that we're going to bring all the other photographs onto to create our digital multiple exposure. So there's three elements of Photoshop that we're going to be using today. Firstly, the move tool. This is a strange arrowy compassy looking thing in the top of our toolbox. Secondly, we're going to be using layer masks. Layer masks allow us to non-destructively punch through layers to reveal what's underneath them. I'll explain a little bit more about that as we go. And thirdly, the brush tool. Okay, let's get started. So I'd always recommend dragging over one layer at a time, applying the layer mask, doing the work, and then move on to the next one. This keeps it nice and simple when working with multiple layers. So click on the image and using the move tool, click and drag on the canvas area of the photograph pull it up towards the tab of the image that you want to drop it onto, then, still holding the click, pull it down towards the canvas area of the photograph, and now we let go of the click. There. Once you've still got the Move tool selected, this is a great opportunity to just move it around and get it into position. Perfect. So what we're aiming to do now is to punch a hole through layer one in order to reveal the second Professor Patel in the background. And to do this, we've got several methods that we can utilize. Firstly, and most simply, is using the eraser tool. This will do the job, but it'll destroy the pixels and make it more difficult to work with if we make an error or a mistake or change our minds. So we're gonna work in a way that's called non-destructively. This means that we're not damaging the original photograph or the original layer, merely modifying it that we can then go back and edit and change afterwards. Layer masks are perfect for this. So to add a layer mask, quite simply select the layer that you wish to add it to and click the add layer mask button at the bottom of the layer palette. There, you'll see this white rectangle appear onto it. Now, quite simply to punch a hole through, select the brush tool, make sure that you've got black as your foreground color and begin to brush through. There. Really quite simple. Now, the reason that we use a layer mask over an eraser tool is because it gives us far more options if we make a mistake. Whoops. So if you wish to paint back an area that you've accidentally taken away, quite simply change the foreground color to white. That can be done by using this small arrow icon there or by pressing X. And then paint it back in. There we go. Two Professor Patels at the table. Quite simply to add the third, repeat the process. Just as a recap, step one, use the move tool to drag your image onto the base photograph and create a layer. Step two, punch through that layer using the add layer mask button. Step three, paint using the black brush onto the layer mask to reveal what's underneath the layer. Step four, 
Repeat the process until you've brought together all of the elements to create your digital multiple exposure. And there we have it guys, Professor Patel's top tips for setting up, capturing and editing digital multiple exposures. Why not give it a go yourself? Share your images with me, let me know how you get on. And in the meantime, stay happy, keep shooting. I'll see you next time in the parlor.